The following is a selected video from VideoMathTeacher.com, where you can explore over 10,000 videos, print out practice worksheets, find proofs and discussions on many math topics, and explore related videos. Try VideoMathTeacher.com today. Let's integrate the following double integral using cylindrical coordinates. We're given the double integral the integral from 0 to 1 and the integral from 0 to square root of 1 minus x squared of the function square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared dy dx. To integrate using cylindrical coordinates, let's first sketch our region of this problem on the coordinate grid to the right. Then we'll convert our integral from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates and then integrate these double integrals. So we'll begin by first realizing that we're integrating square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. This will be our function z. So z is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. If we write this in a quadric surface, we'll square both sides to get that z squared is equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And if we add an x squared and a y squared to both sides, we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. This is the equation of a sphere centered at the origin 0, 0, 0 with a radius of 1. So we'll graph a sphere on our coordinate system to the right. However, we see that we have a square root. So this means that we will not consider any negative values of z's. That means that we'll graph only the upper half of a sphere. Before graphing that though, let's consider our values for x's and y's. We see that our innermost integral is from 0 to square root of 1 minus x squared, which is for dy. So we'll write here that y is between 0 and the square root of 1 minus x squared. Finding what the graph of this will be in the xy plane, we'll write y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared and square both sides. So y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared and by adding an x squared we get the equation of a circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 whose center in the xy plane is 0 comma 0 with a radius of 1. Since we only were dealing with the square root of 1 minus x squared we'll only look at the top half of a circle. Next We'll also consider our x values, and the x values would be the outermost integral from 0 to 1 for dx. So our x values will be between 0 and 1. That means that for our x values, we'll consider them only between 0 and 1, our y values only for the top half of a circle, and our function originally, z, will be from the, the middle to the top half of a sphere. To graph this region, on our coordinate system to the right so we can see this clearly, each four tick marks will represent a length of one unit. So going one unit on the y-axis will be one, going four tick marks on the x-axis will be one, and going up four units on the z-axis will represent one. Including all of our information in this graph now, the x values are only going from zero to one, the y values will be the top half of a circle, which will be this, and our sphere will only be the top half of a sphere. So they'll look like this in our three traces. Therefore, this becomes the region, this one-eighth of a sphere in this first octant that we'd like to find the volume of. To do this, we'll convert our in double integral into cylindrical coordinates. So instead of rectangular coordinates, which were x, comma, y, comma, z, we'd like to convert this problem into cylindrical coordinates of r, comma, theta, comma, z. In looking at our problem, starting at the origin, we'll start from the origin to a radius r being 1. So in cylindrical coordinates, r will be between the values of 0 to 1. For theta, if we start on the positive x-axis and swing upwards, we'll only go to the positive y-axis. That means that theta will be between the values of 0 to the positive y-axis, which will be pi over 2. 
We'd also like to convert our function square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared into an expression with r's and thetas. We recall from cylindrical coordinates that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And so in our function z, we have the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Factoring out a minus sign, we would have z equals the square root of 1 minus the quantity of x squared plus y squared, which we now can replace with an r squared. So in cylindrical coordinates, z will equal the square root of 1 minus x squared plus y squared becomes r squared. Let's rewrite our problem from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. So our original problem was the double integral from we've copied and pasted it here, 0 to 1, as well as the integral from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared of the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, dy dx. In cylindrical coordinates, this will be the double integral. Our first integral will be in terms of thetas. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. Our second integral will be in terms of r's, and r went from 0 to 1. We will change our z from square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared into the square root of 1 minus r squared. dy dx will switch to r dr d theta. We now have a double integral in cylindrical coordinates to find. So copying this integral again, we'll have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 and the integral from 0 to 1 of square root of 1 minus r squared r dr times d theta. To integrate this, let's integrate our innermost integral first. That would be the integral from 0 to 1 square root of 1 minus r squared r dr. To do this, let's use a u substitution. So we'll let u equal 1 minus r squared since we have a spare r for our substitution. Therefore, if u equals 1 minus r squared, du would be the derivative of 1 minus r squared, which becomes minus 2r dr. We have an r and a dr for our substitution. We don't have a negative 2. So we'll divide both sides by negative 2 to arrive at negative 1 half of a du will equal r dr. Therefore, in our problem, if we let 1 minus r squared be u, then r dr will become negative 1 half of a du. So our integral will become the outermost integral will remain 0 to pi over 2. And our next integral will be the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 minus r squared will switch to u and r dr becomes negative one-half of a du times d theta. Since we have a constant negative one-half, this can certainly come completely out of our integral. So this will become negative one-half times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. We'll change square root of u to a fraction power, u to the one-half, so we can integrate du and our outermost integral had a d theta. To integrate, we recall to integrate u to the one-half power that will add one to this power and then divide by that new power. So this becomes negative one-half times the integral from zero to pi over two. The integral of u to the half, if we add one to one-half, we get u to the three-halves. And if we divide by three-halves, this will be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of two-thirds. Evaluated from 0 to 1, but our outermost integral still had a d theta. Before evaluating, we need to change this back in terms of r's instead of u's. And u was the substitution of 1 minus r squared. So this becomes negative 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of two-thirds times 1 minus r squared raised to the three halves, evaluated from zero to one with remaining d theta. Again, since we have two thirds, we can bring this number outside multiplying by the negative one half. 
So we have negative one half times two thirds times the integral from zero to pi over two of the quantity of one minus r squared raised to the three halves power evaluated from zero to one with a spare d theta. To evaluate this, we'll plug in one into our antiderivative and then subtract plugging in zero into our antiderivative. So this becomes negative one half times two thirds. We see that the twos will cancel. So we'll really write this as negative one third times the integral from zero to pi. Plugging in one into our antiderivative will be one minus one squared raised to the three halves minus plugging in zero. We'd have one minus zero squared raised to the three halves d theta. Simplifying, we get negative one third times the integral from zero to pi over two of one minus one squared. One squared is one and one minus that would become zero to the three halves minus zero squared is zero. One minus zero is one to the three halves d theta. So simplifying further, this becomes negative one third times the integral from zero to pi over two. Zero to the three halves is zero minus one to the three halves is one. So this expression simplifies simply to one d theta. To integrate one d theta, its antiderivative would become theta with a negative one third in front evaluated from zero to pi over two. So we get negative one third times and actually zero minus one would be a negative one. So this will become a positive one third that we would have. Plugging in our limits of integration, we'd have plugging in one third times pi over two minus one third times zero. And simplifying this result, we get one third times pi over two minus zero, which becomes one times pi is pi over three times two is six. The result becomes pi over six. So through this process, we found that the double integral from zero to one and from zero to square root one minus x squared of square root one minus x squared minus y squared dy dx becomes the volume of one eighth of a sphere in the first octet. From this, we converted this to our cylindrical coordinates and evaluated the innermost integral and then the secondmost integral and found that the result becomes pi over six. The volume of that sphere in the first octant is the result of pi over six.